right so let's talk about the properties of the chemical synapses and we've already defined a synapse and we have talked about its classification in the previous video now we're going to be talking about the actual properties and basically we're going to be considering how many in total we'll be we'll be considering 11 properties and we'll be going into the detail as needed right so the first property is the fact that the chemical synapses they obey the chemical synapses obey what is known as the dales law right so we do need to define what the dales law is and the implications uh, of chemical synapses adhering to this right so uh, the basically dales law states that for a given chemical synapse meaning we're talking about a particular chemical synapse only one type of neurotransmitter is released and thus the synapse either has an excitatory or an inhibitory effect on the postsynaptic neuron right because um, although in some places um, additional substances are also released um, in certain non noradrenergic synapses where the chief transmitter is obviously norepinephrine small quantities of dopamine have been seen and uh, however their role is not fully known and they may be mere contaminants or they may play a part in the control of synaptic function anyways um, this, this these were the words written in mushtaq i'll be summarizing in a way that is easy to reproduce so the chemical synapses they obey dales law and according to dales law at a given chem chemical synapse synapse the presynaptic neuron neuron can only produce one type of neurotransmitter one type and not one one produce one type of neurotransmitter right and because a neurotransmitter is either inhibitory or um excitatory and never both so the presynaptic neuron basically has either an excitatory or an inhibitory effect on its postsynaptic neuron so that is basically the total of what this is saying point number 1 point number 2 and voila you have at least a uh, full mark secured for this part or now this is important you don't have to write that never both part that is generally concluded concluded from from this writing so uh the presynaptic neuron same wording is either having an excitatory or an inhibitory influence on the postsynaptic neuron with which it forms a synapse and there isn't any need to go into the fact that in certain um synapses there are contaminants formed you can give an example that in noradrenergic um uh, synapses the one type of uh, neurotransmitter that is produced by the presynaptic neuron in which acts on the postsynaptic is nor epinephrine um if you're feeling up to it you may mention the fact that certain contaminants have been found for example even in noradrenergic synapses small quantities of dopamine have been found to be released 
but their rule is uncertain they may they may merely be contaminants or they may have some role in the control of synaptic function for now we are nonetheless wiser anyways let's talk about the next part the next property the next property is an irreducible synaptic delay all right right because chemical synaptic transmission involves the release of a neurotransmitter obviously so it takes some time for said neurotransmitter to travel the distance of the synaptic cleft right and to finally reach there and then to find with the receptors and so you'll always have a delay and this synaptic delay is basically the time it takes for the neurotransmitter to be released right for it for it to diffuse to the post synaptic membrane and the time it takes for it to finally bind with the receptor and all these events uh, account for the irreducible synaptic delay irreducible means something you cannot shorten you cannot make go away right and the value of this irreducible synaptic delay does have variation in different parts right so um so for for example um there is a irreducible synaptic delay of about 0.5 milliseconds that is found in the synapses found in the central nervous system so this shows that this is an approximation and obviously now mm, the it while it is irreducible its value can be changed by certain external factors for example an a rise in the local temperature tends to decrease the synaptic delay because uh, most of these processes are chemical for example diffusion and even binding to the receptor so an increase in kinet kinetic energy tends to speed things up now and this is kind of also proof that synaptic transmission in most parts of the body is chemical because if it were electrical a rise in temperature would have had no effect in electrical activities of whatever right so I'll basically review this because it's a very important concept in chemical synapses um not electrical there is an irreducible synaptic delay right irreducible is something that you cannot uh that you cannot remove entirely or that you cannot remove entirely and synaptic delay is basically um a time interval the time interval when the action potential reaches the terminal of a presynaptic neuron and the basically the message is received um by the postsynaptic so the time it takes for so the time interval between when the presynaptic neurons terminals receive an action potential and the postsynaptic neurons they're basically receiving the stimulus and what accounts for this irreducible synaptic delay uh release of neurotransmitters at the presynaptic neuron diffusion across the synaptic cleft and finally binding with the, with the receptors to complementary receptors on the postsynaptic this is what accounts for the irreducible synaptic delay and because you can because of the involvement of neurotransmitters you cannot uh completely remove this and there's different values depending on different places for example the irreducible synaptic delay in the in the synapses in the central nervous system either the brain or the spinal cord is about 0.5 milliseconds 
so basically uh, between the inch neurons right and while it is irreducible it is subject to alteration for example a rise in local temperature causes a decrease in the synaptic delay which is more or less proof of the chemical nature of the synapses on to the next property <clears throat> the third property is one way travel or unidirectional transmission right um and this is again for the chemical synapses and the synapse in the synapse the impulse um, will always travel from the presynaptic to the postsynaptic and what is the reason for that because only the presynaptic neurons can produce the neurotransmitter and only the postsynaptic neurons have the receptors on their postsynaptic membrane so if you stimulate the postsynaptic neuron it will have no effect on the presynaptic but if you stimulate the presynaptic you will have an effect on the postsynaptic and impulse transmission in the opposite direction in the synaptic left is simply not possible as is one of the more important properties you will come across then we have convergence now as i've mentioned generally speaking in synapses we have two neurons in communication so what do we mean by convergence so when we consider a postsynaptic neuron it is very rare that it receives um, synaptic connection from just one presynaptic neuron meaning a one to one convergence is quite rare it's very rare that we have a postsynaptic neuron it's and it is forming a synapse with just one presynaptic very rare indeed so normally usually more commonly the postsynaptic neuron the one with the receptors on its on its membrane right it receives afferents what do we mean by afferents afferents are something um in the case of neurons generally something that is towards the cns or towards something so it receives not necessarily cns but often times so it receives afferents from a large number of neurons and the axons of those neurons they basically converge on the former right in some cases up to 200000 synaptic knobs for example they've given uh, in mushtaq that in certain cases 200000 synaptic knobs have been known to make connections with a single neuron and the synaptic knob is are basically structures found on the presynaptic neuron on a presynaptic neuron right now in in an in a postsynaptic neuron that is supplied or that has synaptic connections with like say 100 or so neurons impulses from just a few synapses will usually be ineffective that much is common sense have a synchronous meaning something that happens together activation of a large number of synapses would be effective and would either fire or inhibit the postsynaptic neuron again this is about this time it's about deals now because a single synapse is either inhibitory or it is stimulatory but uh, all of the synapses formed by a postsynaptic neuron they are obviously not of the same time same kind some will be inhibitory some will be excitatory so depending on which large number of synapses are stimulated we'll either have excitation or we will have inhibition of the postsynaptic neuron a summation is a concept that is interesting and is generally something that doesn't happen with um action potentials right but it does happen with synaptic transmission both spatial and temporal summation it's basically when things add up and i'll do this in next part video this video is getting a bit too long